plagues of racism, racism, abortion, guns. So the top one percent of the rich lines the pockets of the politicians so they can pay less taxes, and because they need more votes than one percent to win, they basically fool and trick. What do you call it? An engine? There's a think tank. A think tank. So they now had to Institute. And be that, well, so before the news reported the news, now it reports whatever it wants to, and you've got social media right, to. Because, because, well, Fox News, as an example, they're just doing this because they're doing this for ratings, right? This is how they make money, right? So they, they play into this propaganda device. And that's how they attract viewers, you know. So they get throngs of, of these people, blue collar people, people who are, are maybe uh, out, out and out racist or, or have racist tendencies, who uh, are religious, right? Abortion's their only issue. Or, or have guns. They, they've been convinced that Democrats want to steal their guns. Which they don't. Yeah. So, so. This, they draw this audience in, that creates revenue from advertisers because, because advertisers pay more than the better your ratings are, right? So for Fox News, this is just a money-making endeavor, right? It's all about making money. Um, and OAN's even worse. OAN is, is pure propaganda, right? Um, right, it's not even reporting the news, it's just... No, it's pure propaganda. Yeah, it's but yeah. people think it's news, and then they say these things on social yes, media, and, and then it gets it. spread like it's actual news, like we're paying back yes. the stimulus, and that's right. what's created inflation, which is 100% wrong, 100% right. wrong. So, so this person who posted this, he was probably one of the, he probably received a bunch of stimulus money. Right? Oh, yeah, sure. Did he give it back? No. Oh. No, he didn't. Is, is he receiving any government benefits now? Yeah, probably. And he's probably taking it. I don't know. But, but I know several people that are on disability yeah. uh, and have been for many years, and yeah. they get the stimulus, yeah. and they still support all these very policies that hurt them because they don't understand them. They don't stimulus, completely understand how it works. But here's what people like that need to understand. Stimulus money is your money. Right. It's our money. It's, it's not a money. loan that we have to pay back. It's our taxpayers' money. Giving back to us. Giving so back to us. It. So we can spend it and right. stimulate the economy, hence the word stimulus. It's just like a tax cut. And the child tax credit also comes from our money. It's yes, not a loan. It's our money. It's our money. Right. It's giving back our money. But if we keep doing that, we're going to run out of Social Security funds, and you won't have Social Security in two years. Raise taxes on the rich. Well, the they rich don't want to pay more taxes. Too bad. I want to make $18 million, not $16 million. You raise taxes on the rich. Raise taxes on corporations. Too bad they have they have less profits. You know that's the way to do it. That's what Democrats want to do, and they're being blocked by Republicans from doing this. And certain senators who uh, get major, apparently major campaign contributions from uh, corporations like Christian Center. Right. Um, what Biden administration wants to do is they want to raise taxes on and on rich people, anyone making four hundred, anyone making over four hundred thousand dollars a year, right? They want to raise taxes. So unless you're making over four hundred thousand dollars a year, none of this even affects you. Right. They're just using all this as part of their tool to get your vote. When in fact, the very policies you're voting for will hurt you if yes. you're not making over four hundred thousand dollars a year. Yes. And you don't have to pay back the money. It's your money. Right. That's it's the whole money. point. The stimulus doesn't come from some magical bank loan, you know, or we're not borrowing it. It's our money. We actually are borrowing it, but, but it still is our money. Well, whatever. It's like if you have a, you know, a 401, let's say like you have a 401k and you take out a loan against it. It's still your money. You're going to pay it back at a low interest rate, but it's still your money. The point is, it's taxpayer money where the money comes from, so it's still our money. That's the way it the way to look at it. That's what I meant. It's coming from the U.S. Treas Treasury. Right. The U.S. Treasury is funded by taxpayers. By taxpayers. Period. Period. Full 
will stop. It's your money. It, it, it's, it's, it's my money and I want it now. It's the same thing <laughs> as if you put... Um, Kidding. It, it's just like if you put $100 in the bank and you took out 50 instead of 40 It's your money. Well, it just makes me upset because... You know, people are spreading. It's it's spreading faster than wildfire. You can't even contain it, on and it's websites, and it's yeah. con well even Facebook. on Facebook yeah. and whatever. And it's a shame because it shouldn't even be about politics when it comes to the health of our country, you know, and the welfare of our children. And God forbid you use the word welfare. You know, um, people do need help. I mean, I have relatives right now that cannot afford daycare cannot afford to feed their children and you know if they get food stamps it's because they're eligible because they're living below the poverty line you can't get food stamps unless you live unless you're making below like um i don't know twelve thousand dollars a year or something you're living below the poverty line to get food stamps you cannot get food stamps but food stamps and social programs like that put upward pressure to raise taxes on the rich and the rich don't want to have their taxes Right, so, so they, they fight it. So they bribe politicians to convince people that um, social programs like this are socialist. They, they throw out the, the, the evil term socialists, right. socialism, and in order to keep, to, to plant that label in these voters' brains, and then they use it in their campaigning in order to get them to vote for people who are going to fuck them over. Well, that's like I had a relative before they started a conversation with me said, well, before I ask you this, are you a socialist? Yeah. Actually asked me that, and I, I'm like, well, no. <laughs> I'm not a, I mean, a family member asked me that. They don't even know. What you, what you should have asked is, can you define to me what a socialist is? Yeah. They can't. They can't. So what is the definition of a socialist? So, socialist... Is a form of, is a form of government, and uh, there are, there are very few socialistic governments in, in the world. But but really, the way the way socialism works is is it's it's just a a, a way. In, you know, in most modern democracies, are socialistic in nature. Social security is labeled as a socialist program, right? Um, Medicare, Medicaid. So if you're getting if you're getting Medicare or Medicaid, you're a socialist because you're receiving that money. That was the label applied to Medicaid and Medicare when it was rolled out back in the '60s, right? But now anyone that is not a Republican is Republicans term and call socialists. Yeah, they don't know what it means. So socialist is a is a is a form of government. All basic services are essentially free because it's being paid by collectively by everyone. Right? We're not that. Okay? We don't believe in that in this country. And very few uh, modern industrialized countries, I, I can't actually think of any, like England, France, Germany, Canada. Canada. They're not socialist countries. They have higher tax rates on the rich. Like England, if you make, you know, over 300, 400,000, you know, your incremental tax rate is probably like 60, 70 percent, whereas here it's 27 percent. The cost of living is a little lower, but then they also offer free health care for everyone so yeah. that no one has an excuse they have socialistic not programs. to get they, medical not assistance. Not only do they have free health care, they have free education. Right. Right. Free college. Free right. university education. So they're going to roll out healthier and smarter yes. people in their future because that's the way you know right. it goes. Because the rich pay more taxes, and and generally people incrementally pay more taxes, but not the poor. Right? But see, it's investing in the future of the entire country when you do that. Yes. That's my point. You, you know, you you give these child tax right. credit, you offer free you education. Things. You know, you're investing in the future. You're doing things for the greater good. Exactly. Society. Right, and and right. this this momentarily 
this moment moment in time where you think that you're you know somehow so affected and that your belief that stopping people from getting assistance or that we're paying too much taxes is such a small narrow part of the whole picture right what republicans do is they use tropes right they use uh, prejudicial tropes to plant in people's minds that uh, oh the the child care tax credit is going to go to people and they're going to go buy tvs it's going to go to some black family and and they're going to go out and party instead of using it for free or some illegal alien that lives here family is going to benefit right, or, you know, some, tropes. some brown person's going to get some food, right. ooh, you know, because they do use the racism yeah, card. They plant these tropes into their, as part of their propaganda machine, and, and people watch Fox News or OAN 24 really so they get this, they're, they're basically mesmerized. They're being brainwashed. Yeah, if you, like, if you watch the same channel over and over and over, yeah. you're going to get brainwashed, yeah. and furthermore, you're you're feeding your mind with misinformation and you don't even realize it it's right. it, incorrect unless you have the desire to go figure out what is true and what isn't true or if you have the basic <clears throat> desire or capability to understand how government actually works right and most you, people don't right most the majority of people, people don't. don't they think they do they have a very small thin understanding of it but yeah. they don't really understand it they, and they don't want to they right. just Fundamental reality that Comfortable just, living the lie. Right, the fundamental reality that I just explained to you of how Republican politics works. Yeah. No one understands that. I, I can I can tell you right now, ninety nine percent of Republican voters don't understand. That's why it's important, I think, to try to educate people. Yeah. Um, and that's what pisses me off when you know I get not pisses me off, but it's 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 just it's ignorant to call me you know a libtard or a socialist or a Democrat because I was a registered Republican my entire life. I consider myself to be independent, but if I disagree with anything they say, I automatically get a label because I'm trying to help people understand right. that the very policies that they're being told are bad for them are actually helping them and going to hurt our future and our children and our generations to come. And it's a fact. It's you know what have I got to gain the by that? Policies are helping them and will help us. The future of my grandkids is but, what I've got to but gain. The politics that that is that is convincing them that these things are bad will hurt us going into the future. Um, but they just get so hell bent on it, and they catch on it, and you can't even get a word in edgewise to try to explain it to them. So they're going to just live a lie. They're going to live a lie that's going to hurt their own generations and right. their own futures. Yeah, yeah. And that's what makes me. That's what makes me want to try to help them understand. And it's coming from a lifelong Christian Republican. It's not coming from a, you know, someone who's a, a liberal Democrat that's you know done these things. For God's sake, I went and stood on Capitol Hill, you know, and and you know stood up for my own beliefs against John Kerry. And it wasn't because of what his political affiliation was. It's because I believed in doing what was right. And you need to put that R or D aside and understand, you know, what's going on in this country and what is right and what is good and stop letting, you know, any particular news organization or network brainwash you. And they won't turn their TVs off and they won't listen to anything else. And the minute they hear the word Pelosi, Democrat or CNN, they, they flip shit. You know, the fundamental difference between Republicans and Democrats is this, right? Um, you know, a lot of people use the term liberal as a pejorative. It really isn't. Right? As a what? Pejorative. Majorative? Pejorative. Pejorative, I'm sorry. I didn't um, hear you. But it, it's not. I mean, the, the, different, the fundamental difference between, in today's society, between what, what um, Democrats are and Republicans do, or what they say, is that Democrats, um, and this is their strength and their weakness, is that um, they, they basically represent most people, right? And the only thing they have to do in order to explain what they want to do is to be honest, right? Be they honest. They want to raise taxes on rich people in order to put money into the treasury so that they can take
take that money and make lives easier for those who need help. That's at, 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 a, at a very, very high level, that is their agenda, right? And and the reason why they end up uh, having more minorities as part of their core constituency is because in this country, minorities uh, historically have been oppressed, right? Minorities are poorer, generally. So, organically, minorities are going to support Democrats because Democrats' agenda is to support those who need help the most. As opposed to Republicans, Republicans, their real, their real constituency are the rich. Right? They want to enact policies in government that would benefit businesses and the rich the most. And how do you do that? Well, the way you benefit businesses and the rich the most is you lower their taxes as low as possible. Like Trump did. Taxes as low as possible, and you put in place business friendly policies and deregulation. Right? You don't want to regulate businesses, you want to eliminate regulations because you, you want to lower their cost of doing business. That is, that is your primary mission. However, Republicans can't say that, they can't tell people that, they can't say, Well, my Policy is to lower the ta lower taxes on one percent of the population and have the ninety nine percent of the population share more of the burden. If they came out and said that, no one would vote for them except for one percent. They need the vote of fifty, at least fifty percent. So they have to make things up and lie in order to convince the fifty percent that they really represent them. And, they don't. and that is why more people need to talk about this and educate people on, on what's going on, and they're trying to, but slowly. Why, but that's why they, they invent issues. So the, the key issues that Republicans use to get people to vote for them are guns, abortion, and racism. And now COVID. That's a variation on, on all of that, right? All right. But yeah, the, that's an example of... Guns, of racism, abortion. Racism, abortion, and any uh, cultural issues, uh, divisive issues, where they can divide people. Right? They, they, they ha their strategy is to come up with anything, any issue that they ne don't necessarily care about, but will allow them to get as many votes as possible. Well, they're using the anti-mask, anti-vax um, platform. And saying it's your freedoms, right? It's your rights as American patriots to That's not do divide. this, yeah. when they should be saying we need to come together to get this pandemic under control. That's killed over six hundred thousand people. It's crazy. Carol, it can't be part of their strategy to do that because that's a unification strategy, which doesn't necessarily get them more votes. They well, have to always, yeah. you have to always remember. The overarching strategy in Republican politics is to convince people who they don't represent that they represent them. Yeah, they're doing a good job, aren't they? Manipulation and basically just flat out lies that people believe and spread as truth. And it's just mind blowing and it's almost overwhelming because, you know, it's well, we hard to Democratic tackle. President Well, they're pushing it, and they're continuing the division yeah. and preparing for the next election so that they can try to storm back the alleged stolen vote when, in fact, they're the ones who tried to steal the vote. And right. it's been proven, and, it's and it will all come out. It's so. debatable whether their strategy will work 2022. Well, we never expected to be where we are now and look at it. So, you know, they're working very, very hard with a lot of money, a lot of effort, and who knows what could happen, but... You know, if we don't get this out somehow and educate people what is really going on behind the scenes, there's an agenda and it has nothing for the good of yourself. You're being used as a tool, you know, for something that's going to actually hurt us. And already we're the embarrassment of the world. People already don't want to come here. I've seen other people from other countries going, I feel bad for your country, Germany. 
Italy, Spain, you know, your people in Europe will say on Twitter, you know, and other forms, you know, when they see the division amongst us, we feel bad for your country. At one point, you know, coming to America was like a dream, and basically we don't even want to be there because, wow, look what's Trump, happened to you Trump all. Trump has changed the nature of Republican politics. Mm -hmm. he's, changed, uh, he's changed how people treat each other in this country, too, which is really sad. Trump, Trump has, has created, um, he's introduced a new dimension to Republican politics where previously, subtle racist cues. What, no. what um, Trump did is he removed the mask and he's gone, they've gone full white supremacy, yep. full racism. And people forget all the things that have happened. They forget what happened in West Virginia. They forget, you know, how he... Charlottesville. He, I'm sorry, Charlotte. Yeah, Charlottesville. And, and they forget all, I mean, there's just endless lists. There's a laundry list of racist they deny it. comments. And, you know, not only that, attacks on women. You know, and they it's not, it. they deny it, yeah. but I mean, you know, like the January women are, women are yeah. objects, you know, they've objectified, Trump has objectified women for years and nobody cares. I mean, oh, it's completely fine that he cheated on his pregnant wife and that he's, you know, had multiple affairs and taken advantage of women and touched them because he thought he, because he's rich, he could do whatever he wants. You know, they don't care about any of that. None of that matters. Uh, but from a Christian standpoint, that should be your number one red flag. You know, you let you let your husband treat you that way. Would you let a man treat your daughter that way? You wouldn't. So None it's hypocritical. None of that matters. Because, because he pretends like he doesn't care that, that, it, that he's all a Christian and he's against abortion. When he's not a Christian, he is the devil. He really is because of what he's doing to this country. Still. For my own. Out there that none of that matters, and the reason why none of that matters is because Republicans have smartly focused in on uh, like one of the, the core of their agenda in order to get uh, regular people to vote for them, which is the abortion issue, right? right. So, so what they're basically saying, what they're telling, you know, church people who are uh, evangelicals, Christians, is that, well, if you elect us, we're going to make sure. Essentially, what they're telling these people in order to convince them to vote for them, when, when, uh, when in reality, um, they don't care. They don't care about that that particular issue, but they do use it right. to get people to vote for them, and they have no compunction whatsoever to uh, pass laws. Let's make abortion illegal. Let's make it hard. These, those laws will, will disproportionately affect the poor and regular folks.